okay, in life, I believe that people chase money. But yeah. for me, the most valuable thing is your time. Yeah. Because I feel like life is short. Life is unpredictable. You never, I know it sounds a little morbid, but you never know which day is going to be your last. So It's true. And a lot at of, the end of the yeah. day, like, obviously, you need money to sustain yourself. Yeah. But even when you look at some of the wealthiest people, they're not happy. They're not. I feel like your happy, happiness comes from within, firstly. Yeah. And secondly, if you think about what the most valuable thing that you can give someone is, it's your time. It's your so effort. Do you think it's money can make you happy? No. I think that money can help you sustain yourself and live a certain lifestyle that you may want, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily come with happiness, for sure. I mean, if you think about it, when people set goals, some people set a goal of getting a new car. Yeah. They're like, I want this car. And then they get this car. Oh, yes. And then they're not fulfilled by it. Yes. It doesn't buy you happiness. Once you start chasing money, and that's the thing, you know, it sounds crazy and stupid, of course, when somebody is listening to the podcast and they're like i don't have money in my pockets but the thing is if money is the only thing that you're chasing there can never ha be enough money it's true there can never be enough money and all you'll be doing is working and chasing that money and what happens in that duration like you forget about things that are most important to you like family friends all those moments just with people and and your passions. You forget about Passion. why you're doing something for the love of doing it. Yeah. Um, I think when I first told my parents that I wanted to pursue photography, it's a little bit of a battle. <laughs> but eventually, yeah. after a lot of persuasion, my yeah. mom's like, okay, I know this great photographer I want you to meet. Mm -hmm. Let me set up an introduction. Maybe you can intern for him and learn a few things. And I was like, yeah, sure, of course. I'm always open to meeting people and learning new things. Um, so we went for coffee with him. And he sits down and he's like, so you want to be a photographer? And I was like, yes. And he was like, well, I hope you like being poor, <laughs> was his wow. response. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, that's a great <laughs> way to welcome a new photographer. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, it's, it's but okay. But he's prepping you to understand that, you know, if you're getting in need because of the money, and because yeah. even there are some people who look at photography, especially photography, forget, forget about video. Video is a lot of work. There's no shortcuts in videos. In photography, some people look at it like, you know what, I can just take a bunch of pictures, put filters and everything, and I get a jobs, uh, you know, how you get that one perfect picture yeah. and then you get paid a certain amount, X amount of money. And those are the kind of projects that you'll just be working on. I just think that, again, these are constructs that people or society set up for you. Um, and if you set your own goals in life and stay true to who you are as a creator, mm -hmm. then these constructs kind of fall away. You're capable of achieving whatever you want to achieve as long as you stay authentic to who you are. But for sure, I know one thing. I don't want to be broke doing what I love. That's I for think sure. You can be because if you set goals, obviously, like, sorry, <laughs> I'm always running away from the mic. Yeah. I think that if you set goals and you have a niche market that you want to cater to and a target audience and you're committed into putting in the hard work, yeah. I don't think you're going to be broke. You, you won't be. You're going to make something out of yourself. No, no but things it's will not fall chasing the money, but yeah. things will happen as they will as things long will as you fall put into in what place. you need to. Yeah. Right? And people will start looking at your work differently, appreciate it differently, and you will be compensated differently because people coming for that specific kind of... Yeah, to touch on what I just said before, I yeah. if you stay authentic to who you are as an artist mm -hmm. you are unique you are yourself people will come to you well mm -hmm. i hope for you <laughs> um but that's something that i believe and i'm literally implementing to my life and i hope that it comes true <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so eventually they will be driven to to you and your work just I'm sure you it's know this, you do video, you put your own little spin on things, you don't yeah. try, I mean you're inspired by a thousand different people I'm sure, but like, you don't copy them, you stay to, true to who you are and obviously it leaves your own little signature on things. Here's the thing about video, I don't know how you can copy video, because there's just so much that you can do 
even subconsciously and will still have like a creative twist to it. Twist. But it'll yeah. have your own creative twist. Like have yeah, you yeah, watched yeah. videos yeah. from like other people that like have you seen Sam Colder? Sheesh. Okay, Sam Colder is incredible, but you start the video and you know it's a Sca- Sam Colder yeah, video. Yeah. yeah. Or if you watch a Jay Alvarez video, they just Did you meet him when he was in Kenya? He was in Kenya? Oh wow. I have Let me show you him. some pictures. Actually, I'm going Let to me just show you some pictures no, of I'm so what we jealous. did with him. Please show me. I'm joking. I'm lying, no. of course. But he I was. was so he was. A I'm he, going to. He was of in course, Kenya. he's running in um, in Canada soon. I just got accepted. Oh wow. So mm-hmm. hopefully get the chance to Is meet him. Is he from him. Canada or the states? He's from Canada. Mm. But. Um, yeah. Anyway, inspiration in life. But like yeah. what I'm saying is, when you watch these guys' videos, from the second the video starts, there's a certain style to it that you just know who mm-hmm. created it. Yeah, that's true. When you talk about um, when you mentioned something about you just moved back. Yes. Where were you? Staying? I was living in LA, uh, working in production, and also because I wasn't making enough money working as a waitress. Mm-hmm. So I was working like 60-hour weeks. You are not doing what? Huh? You are not what? That's not what? Oh, just say that again. Just say that sentence again. <laughs> <laughs> you were in LA working and everything. I was in LA working in production. That's why I moved to LA because I wanted to learn all about how production works. Yeah. Um, and hopefully get into photography there. But um, working in a production house, I wasn't making enough money mm. to sustain my li- not even chasing money, just to sustain a life in LA. Yeah. So I was also waitressing on the side mm-hmm. um, and working 60-hour weeks. So I barely had any time for photography. I was just making enough money to pay my bills. And honestly, in production... to work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I just got to a stage where I loved my life there in terms of my friends, the community, being surrounded by so many artistic people. Like, I find LA to be... People think it's superficial, but I think it's who you hang out with. I find it to be one of the most inspiring places because there are people there who are passionate about the same things that you are passionate about. There's so much collaboration yeah. and um, so many ideas flying around. It's, it's amazing. Um, but I didn't have enough time to work on these things, which was heartbreaking. And I came back to Kenya for uh, my mom's birthday, actually. And I got one job mm-hmm. uh, shooting for Street Bistro, actually, and running their social media. Mm-hmm. And from there, that led to another one and another one and another one. And I realized Kenya's creative market is growing. Their industry is growing. And I definitely wanted to be part of that. So I made the hard decision to move home. And I've so been you left LA to come back to Kenya? I did. Wow. I did. I feel wow. like... Wow. You wait till I get that visa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just no, like... I feel like I'm LA just waiting for my visa. I mm. feel like LA will always be there um, if I ever wanted to go back. Yeah, Kenya will always be there. You know it's not going anywhere, but right? Yeah, but you see, everything's already established in LA. In Kenya, there's so much untapped talent here. There's so many people. Competition is good for you, and where no, something no. is already striving, and they have systems that are working. Competition is good. Systems mm-hmm. are good. Yeah. But wouldn't you be rather part of building something up, helping? In Kenya. Yeah, I feel like. Don't you feel like no the thanks. creative industry is just there, but untapped into? It, it could is, be so much also, bigger than it is. It could be, but also I think it's like it's at a place where people. If you watch or get inspiration from a lot of things that are online, you kind of see how we are, we are slightly behind the times. And even when you're working with companies, they're like, ah, this is, can you make it simpler? Can't you, can, can't you just make it to something that, you know, people will, like locals will understand and can everything. Can I ask you a question then? Please do. How will it ever change then? How will we ever catch up unless a few select, not few, many people are like, you know what? It's happening here. I want to invest my time and effort into this community because this community will become something. I just love when people are that passionate about Kenya. And of course, it also inspires me to slightly love the country slightly more. Not that I hate it. I'm just saying that, you know, um, we, we don't really have also systems in place that favor um, our jobs because even from a lot of artists who've been here photographers videographers and stuff they're just talking about how like companies still don't understand a lot or some companies who you would want to work with on a low scale as an individual or or rather yeah and they don't really understand 
when you give them a quote for something like, hey, I want to do this and this social media campaign for you guys for X amount of money. I'm like, ah, why are we spending so much on just taking pictures? Like, you know, we can have our intern take our pictures with her phone. If it's videos, we can have somebody just record with their phone. I understand where you're coming from, but yeah. if you look at but global LA, trends, okay, but, but if you look at LA, global trends or even like social media trends, now people yeah. are starting to understand the importance of social media. I mean, my mom has an Instagram account, <laughs> yeah. right? Like everybody. I'm is, opening my is, mom's is, this this month. But that's probably. what I'm saying. The trends yeah. are there. It's happening. It may not be happening as fast as America, but you know this trend is coming. Mm. And slowly, like I've started to see in the only few months that I've been here that people care about what's on their website. They care about the promotional material they're putting out there. Yeah. They want their photos to be hero shots. Mm. It's it's happening. It may be taking time, but it's in the process of getting there. Have you worked with any clients who disappointed you, like just frustrated you, especially in Kenya? Okay, luckily I haven't experienced oh, wow. that yet. So wow. fingers crossed that it stays that way. Listen, um, we can revo- revisit this conversation <laughs> after, after a couple of months, you know what? I've, so far in Kenya, I've been I've been very lucky to work with a lot of passionate brands. They're very passionate about the, what they do, and they have a vision for how they want their brand portrayed. That explains um, a lot. So it's been a lovely experience working here, actually, and I look forward to working with more people. I, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> Things are changing. <laughs> Trends are changing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's just one of those things that. Only time will tell, but also we can't like now start saying that, you know, we disown our own country, companies and everything just because they, they still haven't absorbed the right. I feel like it's growing. Every, it is growing. It's growing and it may be a little behind America or a yeah. lot behind America, but we're growing and things are changing. But uh, also the thing about being a photographer or a videographer, yeah. Or just being a creator, yeah. you're not limited to one place. I may mm-hmm. live here, but there might be opportunities abroad that you might travel for, whether it's passion projects, brands, oh, yes, hotels. Please. Yes, please. You know, there's yeah. you're I fully you're support living that. with a camera. You can pick up your camera and you can go anywhere. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, ideally, I want to live here, but I would love to travel every so often, see the world, capture different things in the world. And just see how many different people work the systems in place and just creativity absorb it from all these different parts of the world when you're traveling okay interesting so did what what did you study i studied international business with a minor in french and marketing wow yeah so nothing to do okay marketing a little bit to do with what i'm doing but um at the, when I went to university, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to study, and mm-hmm. my main focus was on swimming. So mm-hmm. I thought business was the most general thing that could lead to anywhere, and obviously I feel like it's still going to help me in the future. Yeah, even um, if you open your own company or whatever you just decide to do. At least it's a backbone. It's there if I need it. Um, yeah. Definitely will need it at some point. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, part of me wishes that I'd realize this sooner and pursued visual arts a little more but yeah. I feel like if you're interested in something you're willing to do what it takes to learn things by yourself um, I've done a few editing courses like short courses mm-hmm. but a lot of what I've learned about um, shooting and camera is all through YouTube instead of watching Netflix at night I'll throw on either a podcast or a YouTube video and learn different things because I feel like when you're passionate about it it's genuinely as interesting as watching something on Netflix. I think YouTube has made a really big impact in just like the new creative age kind of guys because that's where we learn like everything. Exactly. And there's another app called Skillshare which I've had for a month now. What? Um, Is it free? No, it's $12. Actually, there's ah. a free version, but there is there is a free version. They just yeah. changed it. There's a free di- version, and then there's a $12 a month version. Mm-hmm. But you can go on, and you can watch tutorial videos on just about anything. What is it called again? Skillshare. It's like Skillshare. 3D animation, creative writing, mm-hmm. um, storyboarding, or you can even do like accounting. If you're, <laughs> if you're studying accounting, they have mm. accounting lectures. Mm-hmm. It covers basically everything. And um, I've been taking a creative writing course on there actually, because I feel like it could help with storytelling. Um, writing? 
Yeah, because I feel like if you want to tell a story, there's so many different ways to tell it. Obviously, I'm, I'm more against photo, but sometimes when you have your work, you need to be able to describe your work as well yeah. to certain people. Um, and I struggle with that because for me, when I when I shoot a photo, I know what I want to express. I feel like it's expressed in the photo, and then I come to writing a caption, and I'm like... So do you do, like, the mood boards and stuff, kind so of like that? For shoots, yes. Obviously, I'll regard depends on what the shoot that I'm doing but yeah. uh, I'll sit if I have a client I'll sit with the client find out what their vision is mm -hmm. I'll ask them what the four things they want to portray are what is important to them as a brand ask them a bunch of questions so once I've got an idea of who they are and what they want to express to the public I'll make mm -hmm. a mood board we'll go over the mood board and then we'll set up a concept for the shoot and then shoot and obviously post-production and whatnot I've never but, done um, a storyboard really? I love storyboards and mood boards. I hate storyboards. Why? Because I think <laughs> in college you used to be forced to, to do the storyboards and it just never made any sense to me then. Now I do understand. Of course, if it's something like a more structured commercial yeah. and everything, but for the kind of videos or niche that I've created for myself and what my clients come for is... More of a like you breathe me, I envision it in my head, and I go create it. That's not the best way to work. I guess it's different <laughs> in video because in video you have you have a narrative. You can go yeah, with something. Yeah, but like yeah. a photo, you look at one photo and you want all these things to be oh. expressed in that one photo. And that's where so I think you a need picture is worth a thousand exactly, words. So you, you need multiple pictures. You need a mood board to try and create that mood because obviously mm. you're not going to look at a picture and be like I want to <laughs> copy this picture you want to be like okay I like the mm -hmm. moodiness of this picture I like the sadness in this picture I like this emotion in this picture mm -hmm. or I like the lighting in this and you tie together all these different elements of where you get inspiration from yeah. and you make your own creation well, that's interesting yeah because you know <laughs> so many different people have different ways of working but I know professionals for sure I'm just saying, personally, I've never done like a... Because it just takes me back to college and I used to hate it a lot, a lot. 